Hi, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming in to my talk. Uh, my talk uh, will be about IPv6 and security. I call it IPv6 prompts role in mitigating cyber attacks and really it's time. So my name is Aladdin. I work uh, on the IPv6 uh, as a practitioner and networker. Also, I do a lot of training courses on a regional and international level. Uh, my talk will be quite long, so I hope I will finish in the, my due time, which is uh, 45 minutes. I will dedicate some uh, five minutes in the end for the control questions and if you have some questions and answers. I try my best to make it fair uh, compromise between technical and policy. There is too much technical information. So I would uh, hope that you, I will pass on, uh, on the general principles and general uh, ideas of uh, the IPv6 security issues. And I hope that you can extend your reading uh, further using my slides. Feel free or email me at any time. Or if you can uh, go further beyond this on Google search or whatever you like. I tried my best to make my speech with a good flow of information because the IPv6 security is a big issue, especially uh, the tools, the same tools. So I tried to make it uh, interesting in the following, oops, I'm sorry, in the following diagram. Here is the pyramid. Sorry. I will speak about IPv6 security basics and we go one step further to the common IPv4 and IPv6 security concerns. And then we step further to the IPv6 transition threats and more step for the IPv6 security techies which is quite big and evolving and new tools are <laughs> adapted. And then the final hit will be our security roadmap how to for the IPv6 deployer and network deployers. So I hope this Will the flow of information will be interesting for you? First slide, you probably be aware that IPv4 is gone. And uh, sorry, we are closed on the 3rd of February this year. I have declared that its IPv4 uh, pool had been completely exhausted. So, what is left with the RIR, five RIRs all around the world? So only slash uh, eight blocks which have been already uh, or partially gone. So the RIR are pushing for IP, you assign an IPv6 block and go ahead and step with it. Now, I like uh, to simulate the current internet in this nice chart. You see the internet have been like a like a fish which is flowing in the water but have been prone or imposed too many flows, I will call it a flows because of the congestion and delay, mobility convergence and the natting which is the, the top favorite in the religion for some ISPs and too many security attacks. So the fish is sad because there are too many problems and the flows with the current IPv4 backbone internet. Now, let's go to the first part, which is the IPv6 security basic issues. For the IPv6, you have to consider that it's a, it's a long journey. It's not an easy one. And why is that? I think probably you are aware that the IPv6 protocol is completely different than IPv4. It's not compatible backwards. So you have to be prepared very well for the IPv6. So the only real security a person can have in this world is a reserve of knowledge, intent, experience, ability, and action. And for the IPv6, there is no fixed answer. There is always sort of possible solutions. We will see that there are many scenarios for your deployment and every scenario has a pros and cons. So, please put this in mind that there is no immediate and uh, off-the-shelf uh, answer for your security issues 
and IPv6. Now, the security characteristics and process, everybody is aware this is a very basic thing. You have to consider the CIA model, the digital confidentiality of that, availability and integrity. So, this model, which have been the ideal model for the data, have been distorted by the IPv4, carried back home because of the flows and the hackers and all this stuff. So hopefully IPv6 will restore the CIA model and put in mind the piece that the security is not a technology only. Many people consider the security is a technology solution. No, this is completely wrong. You, uh, security solution uh, uh, consists of three core elements, which is the technology, process, and people, all together. So, the, object, the objective of every ISP is seeing the malicious traffic. You have it coming in traffic, okay? And you want the output of traffic to be in clean. So I put this in grid that the traffic output traffic should be clean without malicious attacks and all this kind of attacks and flows that happens in everyday life. So the output should be a clean a traffic. Also, every ISP have a security incident every day, which should be manipulated and controlled in this complete <coughs> loop. We have secure resources, the firewalls, and encryption of education and audit, and we have to monitor and respond, and we have takes, we have to test and practice our scenarios and our uh, incidents at that, and we have to manage and improve the security process all the time. So this is an endless loop you have to consider, and this is what is called security policy. Security policy, which is uh, unfortunately missing in most of the organizations all around the world, is a core issue in identifying and processing all this loop. How many of you may ask just a quick question? How many of you have security policy in your organization? Is it enforced and effective in the news or just on the shelf? So, so we have to identify and evaluate risks. We have to assist them. There is security breach every day, penetration, desecration, all this kind of the bad things that happen in everyday life. Now, the complete security life cycle. As I said, it's a complete cycle, assess, plan, implement, and manage. All the details are here. You have to consider it as an endless life cycle, everyday life cycle. This is usually done by a special team, which is called security team, or security technology officer, or security information technology officer, regardless of the post title, but you should dedicate a special team for this process. Now, there are eight security dimensions for network vulnerabilities. Here is what and the goal and how. For example, for the access control, the goal is to ensure access by authorized personnel and devices only and protect against another uh, use. This is done usually by simple login and password and the acceptable list and the IDS systems. For the authentication, we have to configure the communications identity for the end users and for the net elements, etc., and to provide assurance of an entity. This is done by the digital certificates and the digital signatures and the SSL. For the non reputation and the data confidentiality, the communication security, data integrity, availability, all these eight dimensions should be considered very carefully as network vulnerables. So the goal is this explained here and how to do it. Now, 
The ISP security breakdown checklist, every ISP has to protect the backbone, core plane, the aggregation and distribution plane, and the customer premises equipment, and the end, the end point. Usually the flows are here, for example, for the layer 3 and layer 2, and the firewall and the dedicated uh, distributor denial of service attacks, and all this stuff. This is very well known by the network engineers and people who work on the security issues. Now, so what is needed? This is the classical model, current model for the IPv6, side-to-side -side secure communication. We need a new model which is called IPv6 end-to-end -end secure communication. That means the end-to-end, -end, both ends, need to be secured via IPv6, as we will see shortly. So, most of the attacks are in the IPv layer, so why motivate motiv motivation for the IP layer security? Well, the internet community has developed many standards for securing this, for example, SSL for the securing of the website, so now we need to provide security on the IP layer, which is the IPsec with the following benefits. It is implemented all at the IP layer, where all the traffic can be secured, no matter what's the application. IP, IPsec in a firewall cannot be bypassed if the firewall is the only connection between internet, intranet and extranet. And transparent to applications, no changes on the upper layer software. And provide routing security. We will see all these details very shortly. So, the header have been changed in the IPv6, and this is a big uh, fuzz because the headers and the protocol is completely different. Now, we have a fixed header of 40 bytes, six optional extension headers when needed, or by hook option header, routing header, fragment header, and destination of option headers and the authentication header which is used by the IPC. You will see this is a snapshot of the, the basic IPv6 header format. Now we have an extension header. All of this diagram is very detailed of the IPv6 header structure. You here this is upper layer protocol data unit which is abbreviated PDU. The IPv6 header, as we said, is 40 byte, and these headers here are uh, the PDU layer and the IP6 packet. So, this is a sample of how you program these headers and put. It's just an example. For example, you put this is the came, these numbers came from the best practices. Or by of zero, you did the 17 encapsulated header 41, a reserve. Uh, 46 IP set payloads 50 plus authentication header, which is 51. And the ICMP, which is very interesting, is 58. Now, what is the benefits of the IPv6 header structure? The checksum have been removed compared with IPv4 because error checking is usually performed in the link layer and transport layer protocols. The, frag the fragmentation has been we relegated to an extension header. The minimum MTU has been increased to this standard value in IPv6. And the fragmentation and reassembly are only performed by endpoints. Routers have to examine more than the 45 headers only when the next header field is zero. The design also pays careful attention to the alignment for 64 processors, for example. For example the addresses are aligned on 64-bit boundaries. The constant size of IPv6 headers make the header length field found in IPv4 unnecessary. Routers and immediate nodes handling the packets are not required to com uh, accommodate variability in the length of the header, which expedites packets handling. So, so some quick Security facts about IPv6. Off-limit and GTSM still bad security mechanism against denial of service attacks. Amplification attack congestion and denial of service can be caused by a packet with a routing header containing multiple instances of 
the same analysis. It is crucial to perform English filtering that prohibits the forwarding of packets to the type 0 routing header. This is uh, inherited from the IP before. And uh, uh, the functionality also IPv6 provides the foundation for the enhanced services such as IPv6 security and mobility. This is for the neighborhood. The packet containing mobile web extension headers must be analyzed at every node along the forwarding path. Extension headers bring additional complexity and performance degradation for the purpose of traffic filtering. Block mobility headers if IPv6 mobility is not being used by an organization. This is very important. If you don't use mobility, then you should don't use this header. Also, the extension headers, as we have seen in that example, can also be used as a common channel to provide communication between two systems. Now, what's the new? This is the most important part. What is the new in the IPv6 defenses? What does it provide? Basically, four core elements, IP set for authentication and encryption, the cryptographic generator, and also the SEND, which is secure network discovery, and the unique local addresses. Also, so many believe that the firewall mod model should be changed from the current one. All of these are explained extensively in these requests for comments. So, what is needed? Secure side to side IPv6 uh, traffic over IPv4 and IPv6 network with IPv6. Basically, the idea is that all the traffic should be encrypted and authenticated. They, these are just as natural to show you when we use the model and all this stuff in the deployment of IPv6, we should secure the traffic because IPv4 is not secure. We should secure the IPv6 the traffic using the IPsec. Now, IPsec components, which is explained uh, in these request for comments, IPsec is three main protocols into a cohesive security frameworks, the authentication header, the internet key exchange, and the encapsulating security payloads. The authentication is provides a framework for the authentication and securing data. This is IP protocol 51. The internet key exchange provides framework for the negotiation of security parameters and establishment of authenticating keys. This is using the security associates. Uh, and the encapsulating security payload provide frameworks for the encrypting authentication and securing data, IP protocol 50. So, for the IP6, there are two basic uh, modes, which is called tunnel mode and the transport mode. The transport mode is used for end-to-end -end sessions, and the tunnel mode is used for everything else, which means the intermediate blocks in the, the traffic. Here, here is the original packet, the tunnel mode. You have to put authentication header to set your authentication header and I, in encapsulating header which is in the IP set as we said you have to set these headers. So a new IP header is created in place of the original. This allows for the encryption of the entire original packets. The ESP or authentication header is inserted behind the IP header. The IP header can be authenticated but not encrypted. This is valid for the transport mode. Let's see more. Oops. So the IPv6, IPv6, sorry, services, these are the services. And these are the components of the IP6 authentication header, encapsulating protocol and encapsulating encryption plus authentication. So you see the authentication header provide this, provide this, provide this, provide this, but does not provide, for example, payload confidentiality. For the traffic flow confidentiality, it's limited due to limited amount of payload but If you are a network engineer and you want to design for your IPv6, IP components for your IPv6 traffic, you should take care of all this. Now, the security associ uh, association, this is a basic uh, thing for the security.
1996. Here, basically, we have a router and a firewall and an insecure channel. So it's an agreement between two entities on a method to communicate securely. The IP security associates is unidirectional. That means we need two way of SAs for two communications. Each SA is identified by the following par par parameters. The security parameter index, 32 bits integer, the destination address only unicast, and the security protocol identifier whether it's authenticated uh, authentication header or encapsulation the information appears in the IP packet so receiver knows how to behave. This is just an example of how to set these parameters shown here. So at the second mode in, in, in the security associates, here we have the three IPsec parameters. And here, whether you are using a transform mode or tunnel mode, here for the transport mode, if you for the authentication header, this pointed will authenticate the IP payload and selected parts of the IP header and IPv6 extension header. For the tunnel mode, you see it will authenticate the entire your IP packets and selected parts of other IP header and other IPv6 extension header. Recall what is the difference between the tunnel mode and the transport mode? The transport mode is for the end-to-end -end communication and the tunnel mode is anything in between. So, the authentication header, here we have a router, the router, the data, the, the, we should send the authentication header so that the other party knows how to behave. The encapsulation, security payload, we have data payloads, the data payload also is encrypted, is encrypted, and so let's see authentication header for version 4 versus version 6. You see this is version 4 chart, this is version 6 chart. You see this is a transport mode and the tunnel mode, and this is the transport mode and the tunnel mode for the V6. So may I ask a question, why there is V4 and V6? Does IPsec is there in the IPv4? Anybody knows? IPsec is there in the IP of, uh, in the IPv4, but it's not mandatory. That's there. It's optional. So this is a big difference between IPv4 and IPv6. IPsec was there in the IPv4, but the uh, but the operation is not mandatory. Now, if you want to do uh, V6 secure, really you have to consider IPv6. Otherwise, you will inherit the same security problems of IPv4. So, I will leave these technical details because I will I, I want to pass on quickly on the other side. This is the Internet Key Exchange, which is the third part of the IPC. It is compromises, it's a hybrid protocol compromised of this main protocols. Basically, it is a two-phase protocol. Phase one, peers negotiate a secure authenticated channel with which to communicate. And the phase two, security associations, the SA, are negotiated on the behalf of IP6 services and accomplish the phase two exchange. So Quickly, phase one negotiate the secure channel and phase two approve this security channel for the communication. All of these are explained very extensively in this request for comments. How does the this is another snapshot of how does the I internet key exchange works as a phase one and the phase two? Another snapshot which may be easier for you to know. Here we have traffic to be protected. This is router 1, router 2. Let's call them IPsec peers, one of them. So the phase 1 establishes the channel, secure communication channel. 
and the reply will be back, yes, I am ready, please initiate and uh, produce the IP set channel, and now the channel will be fully secure. These are some of the terminologies that you may need. So the IP set transforms, again, this is the authentication header, another uh, chart, and this is the encapsulation security payloads, all these technical details. So IPSAFE, the transfer specifies either an authentication header or an ESP protocol and its corresponding algorithms and modes. So, in conclusion, there are five steps for IPSAFE implementation. Step one, post one send. Interesting topic to post D. Step two, router and ID negotiate an internet key exchange phase one session. Step two, the reply comes back with approval. So router and ID negotiate an IP, ID, internet key exchange phase two session. And now the communication is established via an IP sector in step four. And then we have to terminate the IP sector. Usually, uh, there is a value that you set up the termination, which can be 100 megabytes or one day or whatever you set this value. So the, this is another snapshot from the five steps of the IPC. It's completely written in details. I will leave it for you to see after. Now, for the cryptographic generated address, you see, you know, we have a BRSA keys private and public. This is the interruption algorithm comparison for the DES, which is weak, for the 3DS, which is medium, for the AES, strong, for the RSA, which is very strong, so it's based on RSA, and uh, creation of the cryptographic generated address, and it goes to the interface identifier. So, from this, we have the send message, which is secure neighborhood. Each device, each device has an RSA key here, no need for certification, and it will go through. The send, which is, I will go back to this, the send is based on the CGA. So the send is based on the CGA. It is a standard to mitigate the network discovery attacks, because usually hackers are looking for your neighbors and trying to attack. So this standard has been done in the IPv6 to mitigate the network discovery attacks. Again, these are the encryption algorithms and the hashing algorithms. And this is explanation for the send and how we do it. All the details are in this request for comments. And the firewall model change. You know the firewall, the internet here, here is the, your enterprise firewall. So, internet firewall, cross router, edge devices, this unit architecture, are one point for routing a security policy. You have to consider this, and all the traffic should be IPC secure. Now, let's go to the second part, which is the common IPv4 and IPv6 security concern. There are common security concerns between both the protocols. Here is uh, just a simulation and a snapshot of everyday attacks, especially the zombies, the movements, and the denial of service uh, attacks. So the lower layer affects the higher layers. You see, this is the OSI model we have. Unfortunately, this means if one layer is hacked, communication are compromised without the other layers being aware of the problem. Security, this is a major logo for the security. Security is only as strong as the weakest thing. And in networking layer two can be a very weak thing. This means that the V4 and the V6 share the same security attacks if you do not know carefully and design how to design your network using IPC. So, the attack services and layers, this is the IPv4 uh, IP native, IPv6 native, we have 
common scenarios for the employment in CNN, in the staff, channels, etc. All are shared with the same security concerns and the attacks are everywhere, especially on the network layer. Now, the common B4 and B security issues, roughly they are the same. We have the denial of service attacks, we have the viruses, the worms, and the distributions, especially that the IPv6 does not protect the application layer. It protects only the network layer, layer 3. And we have man in the middle attacks, sustaining the fragmentation attacks, application layer attacks, or the network and the security engineers know these, how they have been done, and how to mitigate. So, for the example application layer attacks, IPv6 will do nothing to prevent. And the threats over you, this is on the TCP or the UDP, these are ports, the major security flows and attacks for IPv4 and IPv6, on layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, layer 4 to 7, and multiple layer and miscellaneous, and this is the briefing for these attacks. These are common between V4 and V6. So the transition threats between IP, uh, to IPv6, everybody is trying to deploy IPv6, he may ask a central question. What are threats I may have when deploying or migrating to IPv6? Transition, the landscape is big. If you are using the dual stack or tunnels, you will have to consider, for example, there are 16 plus transition methods in combination, dual stack, tunneling, tunneling, there are Torino 64, manual tunneling, automatic tunneling, etc. So, the general two families is the dual stack and the tunnels. For the dual stack, you have to consider the security for both protocols. Since that you will deal, make your host speak both languages, B4 and B6, you have to take care of the security for both of protocols. This is what is meant by consider security for both uh, protocols. And the, for the tunneling, we will see that in a minute. For example, in the, the layer 3 and layer 4 is moving in IPv6 when using IPv4 or IPv6 tunnels. This is a snapshot with our eyes down. You have server A here, you have server B here. You have the V4 and you have a tunnel IPv6. So most IPv4 and IPv6 transition have no authentication built in. Which means that an attacker can inject the traffic is, if it's moving on IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. This is ISATAP. ISATAP is a model uh, standard uh, property of Microsoft for tunnel, uh, 64 tunnels bypass. You will see this 64 router, 64 router. This is the IPv4, this is a tunnel, uh, and this is the 64 relay. So you have to increase the incoming the traffic, otherwise you will have attacks. This is another example of this attack. This is the reader tunnels. First, without the reader, controls are in place. All outward traffic inspected, the peer to peer, for example, all of our traffic blocked by the firewall. So the outbound the traffic is inspected and the inbound the traffic is blocked by the firewall to make your network really secure. So no more output, uh, outbound control, no more output control by the firewall. and no more inbound control. Inbound control the connections are allowed. IPv4 firewall able to control. IPv6 hacker can penetrate. This is a snapshot of how this is done. A spoofing also. And this tool is used primarily for protecting against L3 spoofing, like the denial of service attacks. So the transition mechanism the threats, this is a summary, you will, you will put this in mind if you are deploying uh, to IPv6. The dual stack is preferred, but running the dual stack will give you at least twice the number of vulnerabilities because you will have to deal with both. 
words before and misses, you have to take care of that. Tunnels, for example, six to four and other uh, tunnels modeling can bypass via false security. Tunnel mechanisms are susceptible to backdate forgery and denial of service attacks. Manual tunnels is it preferred because if you go to automatic tunnels, that means you will be under the mercy of the automatic tunnel provider. So manual tunnel is preferred, but it's not easy to configure. For the dynamic tunnels, 6 to 4 relay routers are open relays. That means they can by bypass your traffic and you are susceptible to the threats. And deny packets for the transition techniques not in use for usually we deny the protocol 41 forwarding unless it is really easy. And we deny the UDP 3544 uh, for forwarding unless you are using Teredo tunneling. So you will see from this that there is no one single answer for your security issues if you are migrating to IPv6. You have to deal with this pain, you have to deal with both worlds, IPv4 and IPv6 existence. If preferably you have to use the dual stack, you control the V4 and the V6 planes. And if you are going to use a new, uh, uh, tunneling, the conclusion is prefer to use manual tunneling rather than automatic tunneling because the automatic tunnels are open relays and they can they can bypass all the flows and the attacks. So the transition threats comparison, this is the dual stack, this is the tunneling, dual stack equal vulnerabilities of V4 and V6. If firewall is not configured to apply the same level of uh, uh, sorry, to apply the same level of security to IPv6 packets, the firewall may let IPv6 security <coughs> dual stack hosts. For the tunneling, the three main potential problems are six to four routers are not being able to identify whether relays are legitimate. They can just by bypass it blindly. They do not know this is legitimate or not. Wrong or impartially implemented six to four router or relay security checks. Six to four architecture used to participate in denial of service or reflected denial of service. And This is one of the biggest problems, layer 3 and layer 4 scoping in IPv6 with 6 to 4 tunnel. Let's go to some of the techies for the IPv6, what you want to know if you are a network engineer, a deep technical guy, or a security man in your organization, and you are in charge of securing your IPv6 uh, networks, you have been asked to do so. Let's see what you should do, what you should learn. First, the building blocks and the protection techniques. For the ending building blocks, you have to care, take care of ending endpoint protections, uh, protection. This is used using IP6, as we said, to authenticate and improve the traffic. You have to set your admission control. You have to contaminate your infection. Also, you have to deal with the incident response and the IP uh, intrusion prevention system and the IDS in place. And you have to deal with the application layer defenses because, as we said, IPs, IPv6 and IPv6 will not protect the application layer. For the protection techniques, you protect your computer from the internal and external entities. You have to secure remote sites if you are using VPN technologies, infrastructure protection, and the client security and the server security also should be done in place. Now, we need an IPv6 security plan. We, I ask you a question if you have a security plan for a security policy for your uh, organization. We need to set an IPv6 security plan which consider the following core elements in equipment configuration, the parameter defense, the ITPS, the firewall, content filtering, mail filtering, patch management, <coughs> vulnerability uh, management, certification and accreditation, the authentication and authorization and accounting for the DNS servers, 
and all this stuff. And of course, this is the basic that you have to start with. Get a train on it, which is using IP sector. The fire security wall, the old model, you will see here the old model, which is almost used in the MDB for, uh, in the V forward. There's the core routers individually secured. Every router is secured. And every router, this is accessible from the outside. This is wrong. This should be changed to the new world. Well, the whole perimeter core router is secured individually, and the router is generally not accessible from the outside. This is the major difference between the old world and the new world. This is an example enforcing a security policy using the Cisco command iOS. You will see here, for example, we block this and we allow this only. Another example, basic IPv6 filtering, uh, packet filtering. I will pass on it quickly because I'm running out of time. Another example for firewall feature set. If you, uh, use, uh, if you use iOS command, you will need to practice this. Also, the router security one, the, one, uh, the old one is untrusted, all the traffic's coming, and we have, you, we need to a central policy enforcement prior to process level, and on high demand, high end platforms with hardware implementations. So, basically, we need to put a new protection layer just facing the input of the router. Preventing router header attacks, use IP6 to secure protocols such as the OSPF version 3, which is for IPv6, in comparison with OSP version 2 for IPv4. Also, for the ICMP and other related security implications, it is very essential for IPv6. This is the Internet Control Message uh, Protocol. This is a comparison between the V4 and the V6. ICMP policy on firewall needs to change. Let's see how you see here, for example, this is waterfall firewall policy for IPv4, and this is the new equivalent for version 6. You have no route to destination, you don't permit this, just a blind This is another uh, additional ICMP uh, potential uh, issues which is taken from the last slides. For example, the ICMP for the uh, version 6 naval discovery, the FA needs to a map or B, it's an ICMP naval discovery solicitation, this is A and this is B, network discovery, network solicitation, A sent to B, or notes, multicast address, B, C, the request and respond to it, an ICMP, Version 6 naval advertisement and a with its MAC address. Also, it will prevent the uh, duplicate address detection, which is called the DAD, and for the stateless auto configuration. So, ICMP threads, which is a big thing issue in IPv6, is root detection, so network giving you misleading information on consuming resources, and the mitigation is all clients and servers can be mitigated by using the authentication options in the HCP version 6. This is an example, the UDP any equivalent to 5 or 8, any uh, EQ for uh, 5 uh, for 6. So we need a good IP safe policy, whether it's for host of host scenario, we need basically and generally we need authentication. Encapsulation payload. This is scenario A, this is scenario B. For the gateway to gateway scenarios, we need IP set here and here with keeping in mind these internet key exchange two places as we say. And this is for the hybrid scenario, which is host to host a host to gateway and gateway to host. So, some of the tools used are these tools are classified as sniffers, packet captures, scanners, packet folder, denial of service tools, and all this. 
These are some of the tools. These are developed by the Hacker Choice, which is a very good uh, website. I will suggest that you go on this, and you will uh, see and practice these tools as an attacker. This is, I, oh, oops, I'm sorry. I made a list of, of these tools, and what does it do? It's taken from this website, other tools, and now, for example, the set scanners, and some type explanation of these tools, for example, real life, what does it do, and what is the best thing to be done for IPv6. I will leave it this for you, because this will take very extensive time <coughs>
Thank you. Let's do the quiz quickly. Yeah. Just questions. All the slides will be available after the event so you can study it and then afterwards when you're back to the company.